Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to use constraints in Xcode. Now constraints are actually super important now due to Apple just releasing split view. If you don't use constraints in your app, people are not going to be able to use that in the split view. So today I'm gonna show you how to get it done. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is open up Xcode and create a new Xcode project. This will just be a single view application, although this will apply to all your applications. Product name, I am just going to call mine constraints. You can of course call this whatever you want. Our language will be set to Swift, although this doesn't apply really. And then we have devices will be iPhone, although this is universal. Click next and create. And now if we were to build and run this, let's open up our main.storyboard. And inside of our main.storyboard, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I'm just going to add a button. Now let's just say I take this button, I want to drag it out to the sides here, and I always want it to be towards those sides. Now let's go over here to our attributes inspector, and I'm just going to change the background color of this button equal to just a nice blue color. Doesn't really matter. And this is just to demonstrate exactly what Auto Layouts is doing here. So if we were to actually go down here to the bottom right hand corner and you see this little triangle thing. Click on that triangle thing and we, and we can click Add Missing Constraints. Now this adds the missing constraints, but you don't exactly know what's going on here. So we have our constraints. This is the horizontal axis right here, the horizontal axis right here, and then we have the center Y. Now if we were to build and run this real quick, you will see that we have the button and it's going to keep the spacing between here and here and it's also centered inside of our scene. So this is exactly what I wanted but we need to go more in depth to what exactly it's doing here. So now let's click on our button, head over to the constraints and inside of our constraints we have these three constraints right here. So let's go ahead delete those and that will delete all the constraints that we had on our button. Now let's manually add the same type of effect to our button. So let's right click or control click and drag from our button and we're going to go over to the view and we are going to add the leading space. Now in just the graphic that you just saw, we have the leading space. Now the leading space basically means there is some space between here and whatever you're setting it, the spacing up to. So this is this leading space. It's leading up to the button. Now let's right click or control click and drag from our button to our view and we're going to add the trailing space. Now as you can see right up here is that what it should be displayed when you build and run. It's not always going to do that but this is what it will fail safe to pretty much. So we have our leading space, our trailing space, this is the amount of space between here and the edges of our scene and from here to the edges of our scene and this will actually build and run perfectly fine. Although if there is a problem, it will automatically go up here and you don't want that to happen. So as you can see, everything is labeled orange right now, but we want to change everything to a blue color. So let's right click or control click and drag from our button over to our view again, and we are going to center vertically in the container. Now when I say center vertically, that means it's centering along this Y axis right here. So anywhere along this Y axis, it's going to center. They also have center horizontally right here, but we don't want to really mess around with that in this case, but it will work. It's just centering it horizontally along the x-axis. So now let's build and run this again. And we have our button. It's centering vertically, centering horizontally as well. And then we have the leading space and the trailing space. Now this is cool and all, but let's go off to our constraints again. And we're just going to delete all the constraints we just added. Let's take the button and I'm just going to make the button a certain width. Let's say I make the width 300. Now let's add an image view onto our scene here. I'm just going to change my width to about 260 here and now let's right click or control click and drag from our UI image view to our button and now we can set up constraints from our UI image view to our button. So we have the horizontal spacing basically the amount of spacing between the button and the UI image view and this is actually going to give this a orange error color but we need to add more constraints in order for this to get a better color. So let's right click or control click and drag from this button now over to our view and we want the leading space and you can hold shift to select more multiple constraints at one time so let's right click or control click and drag from our button to our view and we want to center vertically as well. Now next thing we need to do is say I want this button and this UI image view to be the exact same width all the time. Let's right click or control click and drag from this button over to our UI image view and we want this to have equal widths. Now as you can see we have an error kind of going on here where it says plus 40. So in order for this equal widths to work we are actually going to set the button size 
minus two minus 20 and then we are going to also add 20 on the other on our image view so we have plus 20 on our width which will be 280 each then we can center that. Now let's right click or control click and drag from this button over to our UI image view and we are going to have this as equal widths now. And as you can see, now we have blue and that is just what we want. Now let's right click or control click and drag from our UI image view to our view right here and we want to have a trailing space on this. And now the other thing it's looking for is this UI image view. As you can see, this there's like a dashed line right here. This means that our UI image view typically technically has no height. So we need to right click or control click and drag from our UI image view over to our UI image view itself and we are going to set the height equal to the height that we already have. Now let's right click or control click and drag from our UI image view over to our button and we are going to center the Y axis of our image view to the Y axis of our button. And now as you can see we have blue constraints all around. So now if we were to build and run this we have our button but our image view actually doesn't have a background so we can't really see it. Let's go over to our image view, go to attributes inspector and let's head over to the button and we're going to make this just a random color. Okay, now let's build and run this. And you will now see that we have our UI image view, the same exact width as our button, and we also have spaces in between everything. Now let's head back over to our constraints and just select all the constraints and delete them. And we can do the same with our image view right down here. You will see that there's a constraint that we added just to our image view. And if we were to actually select this and just say set add missing constraints, we are going we can build and run this and as you can see we have our button and the image view kind of different lopsided so we didn't want that to happen and that's why we went through the whole manual process so yeah that's pretty much how you work with constraints in xcode you got to use things the way you, that you have to think about it and now i'm just going to hit command z that way we that way we have our constraints back that we manually set up and there's a few other things that you could do. Now let's right click or control click and drag from our button over to our button itself. And we're going to set the aspect ratio. Now in general, the aspect ratio thing doesn't really work if you have a lot of other constraints, but it sometimes does work. So we have our button and it's trying to keep the same aspect ratio that we had for the button before. It doesn't always work, but it is it does work sometimes. And we can do the same for our image view right here. Keep the certain aspect ratio, build and run. And now if we were to click on our UI image view, go over to our size inspector. The thing that's messing with the aspect ratio here is we can click on the height. So the height equals, we can take away that height equals 128. And now let's build and run. And now it's trying to keep that same aspect ratio that we originally had. So yes, the aspect ratio does work, but you just need to look at some other constraints and make sure that it's not interfering with how the aspect ratio would work. So yeah, those are pretty much the only constraints that you will probably ever use. There's other constraints that, such as top, which basically means that it, we have the top of the button, as you can see here, we created this constraint. So it's creating a spacing between the top of our button to the top of our UI image view, and it's going to keep that distance as a constraint. Now you also have bottom, which again is pretty much the same thing as top, except of course you're using the bottom. So it's going to keep the constraint from the bottom of our button to the top of our UI image view. And then we also have our left, which basically again, it's kind of the same reasoning as top. We just have our left spacing from this left of our UI image view to the left of our button. And then we also have the from the right of our button over to the right of our image view when you click on right. But yeah, that is how you work with constraints in Xcode. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.